Hi guys, some believers who believe gods exist or their favorite one and only god exists often accuse me of sidestepping this particular issue. Is there a god and is it even a viable concept? They accuse me of mudding the waters and only sowing doubt into the hearts of those who do nurture this belief in a super duper supernatural pacifier. Is this because the believers don't use their brains properly? Are they deluded and kidding themselves? Well, let's find out. I'm going to explain what I intend to do and how I will do this. And this for probably something like 80% of the video. And then the last 20% is going to be what the video is actually all about. Now, what I first need to explain, and I think this is quite important, and this is why I'm going to explain it in detail, is that as a non-believer, here and now, I will agree to label myself as a theist even if that term actually makes no sense. And I will even admit I am an atheist due to atheism, even if that word is totally, completely wrong and nonsensical. But it allows believers, i.e. those who believe gods exist, to wrap their heads around the concept. So, as an atheist, I don't believe gods exist. But I don't claim anything. I don't claim anything about God, bearing in mind that I am talking only as an atheist, which, and this being an atheist, is just one aspect and side to my entire person and multifaceted personality. This absence of a belief regarding God does not imply anything else. It's just a description of one single, one tiny facet of my person. But now, instead of just describing my absent belief regarding gods, a single aspect of me, I look at myself as the sum of, I don't know how many, like 2,874 different facets. A person with a personality. And now things change. Because now I can utilize all of my brain and all aspects of my intellect and experience and my entire view of everything. And now I make claims substantiated claims based on justified beliefs, even regarding gods, which actually turned out to be extremely difficult. Because, you know, just to remind you once again, in my capacity as an atheist, I don't and I can't, mainly because I don't really know what a god is supposed to be or would be. And Funny enough, no believer who believes God's or just his favorite God exists has so far been able to provide a meaningful and consistent definition of their God. So what is it that I can do in this situation to end up making a positive claim? Well, what I don't do is quote well-known philosophers like, I don't know, Hume or Nietzsche or something, or scientists like Einstein or Hawking and their respective approaches regarding a God belief. What I try to do is two things. Firstly, I expose and question bad ideas, ancient superstitions, idiotic claims, childish beliefs, which stem from these God-based ideologies. Now, if a believer can't explain why they believe what they believe, why should I believe them? Faith is not sufficient as it only has people pretend they know something when, in reality, they don't. So secondly, I refute, debunk, ridicule, whatever, those who make these stupid, childish and unsubstantiated claims. As an atheist, I only have one single attribute. I don't believe gods exist. Full stop. And that's it. But now, here in this video, I'm speaking as the entire, the whole person. So don't tell me later if I do something else here, but in this video you said there are no gods. Right, because I'm here, I am a, a, the entire person, not only the atheist. And now, as the person, let me be very clear on something. Gods don't exist. There are no gods. So let me argue this. Because the correct and precise way of saying this would be the probability of gods existing is close to zero. Because epistemologically, we can't know for sure and for a hundred percent. Like the probability of dragons existing is close to zero. Or the probability of flying mules existing is close to zero. Or talking ants. I think they're the probabilities also close to zero. 
So the fact that I am a human without a belief regarding the supernatural, what theists love calling atheists, or that I am an anti-theist who neither needs or wants God, this has little bearing on this. And just for completeness sake, this has nothing to do with being an agnostic or agnostic, i.e. regarding knowledge, which quite obviously is a pretty useless concept. So in essence, what does matter here is my brain and my ability to use it, the intellect, activating both brain cells simultaneously. So if I now go and use doxastic logic, i.e. the ability to take beliefs, uh, religious beliefs, and analyze them rationally and use reason, i.e. my brain, I come up with many very, very clear statements. And my number one statement is gods exist or don't exist, irrespective of what humans believe. Now, just to understand this, this is a bit like a king, where a king is a king as long as there are subjects. Without any subjects, a king is just another lonely guy. But at least the guy exists and is just a deluded guy. Rattling off statements is just a one-way communication line, like me preaching. And this is where I use questions rather than statements to make my point. So taking this concept of a king and that of a god, this would result in the question, if a god existed, would it actually be a god without anyone around to notice? And then we get into the dilemma of what a god actually is, but that's a different discussion altogether. So, to make it more of a challenge and interactive at the same time, I now went and changed all my statements into questions. Simple, personal questions regarding the standard god-related beliefs which usually exist in the 21st century based on the little that these have provided as descriptions, attributes or qualities of their favorite god or gods. Now, combining the philosophical concept of gods and then putting this against the reality and logics enables observations, which permits a rational analysis, and this in turn makes it obvious that gods don't exist. Add in the scientific observations of nature, the natural explanations, and you're done. Take, for example, this uh, weather. There are no special weather conditions when, let's say, a pope lands. When, when an Ayatollah lands at an airport, or the Dalai Lama for that matter. No, oh, it doesn't matter whether it's a president. No, the weather does its usual thing. Nature following natural conditions and patterns. The Kaaba or a Jesus statue get flooded or burned down just like any structures do. Whether It doesn't matter whether it's a cathedral, synagogue or temple. No special treatment which might be attributed to a specific deity this, none of this can be detected. Nothing that would influence what goes on here or anywhere in this universe can be seen. Now, in a catastrophe, whether man-made or natural, people die indiscriminately, regardless of their belief or ideology. And yes, I know there are claims that a mosque, a temple, a church or whatever structure withstood a tsunami or an earthquake. But this is sheer desperation mixed with projection and confirmation bias. Gods are not directly and physically detectable, okay? So they can't be demonstrated. Gods depend on what human beings believe without evidence or with imaginary evidence at best, without even the basics, being able to supply as much as a superficial, let alone a rigorous definition for gods. Just some wishy-washy mumbo-jumbo and pseudo-philosophical spiritual ramblings. So let me get into the nitty gritty and look at some questions where I hope people will ask or challenge me and this will result in a dialogue which at the end of the day makes people think because that's what I'm trying to achieve. So in the real world, at least according to my observations and experience, gods don't provide any explanations, just an excuse not to think. And after a why, there must be a how. And gods never explain how they used what material in what order using which process with what outcome when claiming they I don't know, created the universe. From what? From nothing? Well, you can see where this is going. Now, I'm going to apply this, come up with hundreds of questions, but I'm only going to bring out a couple. And this then culminates in a positive statement. Why I don't believe gods exist. To best understand my questions, questions which immediately popped up when I started thinking about gods, I suggest you 
you know, you put yourself into the position of a god as best you can, and then think about the questions and their possible answers. Do gods exist if humans don't exist? You know, like king and the subjects or a, or a boss. I mean, you can't be a boss if there's nobody to boss. <laughs> um, why isn't there a single god? Why are there so many? Why do gods need to stress they are the only god if there are no other gods? Why is a smile built into all humans, but not the singular God? Why is there no common definition for a God? Why are gods so obviously human, anthropomorphic? Why do we need to learn dead languages to understand what the gods want from us? And why are we dependent on human translators or apologists? Never a divine original in all languages. Why? Are these divine messages always conveyed using outdated language? Never slang or never words that we would use today. Why are these messages always using human language and a human means of distribution? Don't gods have other means available to them? And why are these messages never updated and condone immoral acts like slavery? Why do gods require apologists instead of clarifying everything themselves? And why do gods require worship anyway? And why in hundreds of different formats and variations? Why do gods require such stupid superstitions and rituals? Why do these prescribed rituals have no demonstrable or detectable effect as advertised? Why, why are God so obsessed with sex and what humans do when naked? Why, why would gods create humans and then require physical modifications, like mutilation? Why do gods create humans with sexual preferences and then teach others how to kill them if they have these specific sexual preferences? Why do gods require sacrifices of anything? Why are gods so despotic, jealous, petty, brutal, and so extremely violent? Why are gods so mean and speak in puzzles? Why all the imprecisions in the texts? Why are the holy books so full of obvious mistakes and contradictions? Why do gods require prophets to explain what they said and wrote? Why do gods require prophets to correct their mistakes? <laughs> Why, why do gods require threats in order to be accepted and worshipped? Why are gods not apparent and obvious? Why is nothing about gods ever testable? Why do gods exist outside of time and space and are completely undetectable? Why do we even need to invent a second reality, well, reality, just and only for gods? And why are gods not accessible? Why are catastrophes necessary in a divine plan? Why do all people die regardless of their flavor of a God belief if a, you know, in a, in a fatal plane crash? Why are gods omniscient when this means they know their own future and thus can't change their own minds? Doesn't make sense, does it? This means that why are all gods subject to human logics? Why do we need complicated arguments and signs when something simple would suffice? Why do creator gods make things look as though they were designed? And why are 99% of all species extinct when everything is supposed to be handcrafted by one of the creators? Why are humans created through billions of years of evolution instead of just a single poof? Why, why do all rules and laws and prohibitions only apply to a small region? on one single planet. Why then do we need a galaxy? And then of course, why do we need hundreds, thousands or billions of galaxies? And why do we need, I don't know, eight, 18, 18 million planets? Why do all galaxies look chaotic and uncreated? And when you look at them, they are chaotic. Why are gods so incompetent? And in specific questions, why are most Muslims illiterate? And why can a single question nullify all gods? 
Now, all these questions can be discussed, substantiated, qualified, but anyone who's thought about them will realize the answers mean only one thing. There are no gods, Un unless you ignore and cover them up with faith. And let me tell you, some of the most important questions have not been asked here, like why, if there is a God, is it hiding? And making everything appear as though there was no God, and life is like a hidden test of sorts. But these questions are complex and require an entire discussion, so I've left them to be discussed another day. All this, all these, these questions can only result in the usual mental masturbation or mind gymnastics, where those who cling to their God, their God belief, and who require some sort of deity to get them through the day, will come up with, I don't know, just creative and pretty useless replies. Replies they have designed to comfort themselves and each other, just to keep the fairy tale alive. The method apologies use is not demonstrating the existence of a god, but that the belief a god exists is okay. All they actually do is quote each other ad nauseam. It's a fairy tale, a brutal, horrific fairy tale about despotic, jealous and narcissistic gods, incompetent and useless, only fit to do one thing, go where they belong, a museum. Thanks for your time.